Well, we just parked up at uh, Knotfest, and it was a uh, kind of a mess. There's obviously 30,000 people here, so it's gonna be uh, pretty difficult to do, but uh, we made it, we're parked up, and the line is absolutely massive. For what's, for what you get out of free parking, there's the bad side of not enough attendance and everybody pointing you to <laughs> a different direction because they don't want to deal with you. So, so anyway, we're here. We're gonna eat some lunch in the car before we head in. Um, the bands that we're most excited about are going to be Trivium, Gojira, Lamb of God, Megadeth, and Slipknot. And I don't know a whole lot of Trivium, but they're from Orlando, so gotta check Somehow them. Somehow we haven't seen them yet. Gotta check them out, gotta gotta see them. Gojira, obviously we love. Loved Fortitude, the new album. This is their second show since the pandemic, so really excited to see some of the new material. Hopefully they play it. I haven't looked at the set list for them yet. Uh, Lamb of God, I'm wearing my custom Lamb of God vest that I'll show you when I get out of the car. So obviously love them. Megadeth, love them them last free concerts have been canceled that I've had tickets for so really glad that hopefully this is happening tonight if <laughs> oh it's happening if, if, if Megadeth for some reason doesn't doesn't play it's just meant to be that I'm not supposed to see Megadeth <laughs> anymore yeah. and then Slipknot we really like a lot um I in high school I was totally against Slipknot I'm like oh I'm I don't like Slipknot because they're like too mainstream then same I was in the same boat and then uh I didn't really have much thought of them you know as I got older, and then Caleb, our friend we're meeting here, loves Slipknot, and he uh, brought us along to a Slipknot show in Tampa with him in 2019, and they blew us away. We really like them now, so we're gonna really enjoy all these bands. But we're gonna we're gonna eat our lunch and get in there. Checking out the parking situation here. This is just one of many lots that they have. Doesn't get much more. Uh, doesn't get more much Iowa than setting the lineup next to a bunch of corn. We're at the back of the line, and I'm going to say it's probably going to take us about an hour and a half to get in there. Hour, hour and a half. <laughs> We are here, and apparently the line goes all the way there. It's been about an hour, and now we are still got a long way to go. We were way back there an hour ago. <laughs> Don't leave your car in a dusty parking lot at a Slipknot show. <laughs> poo poo. That's a good one. <laughs> Got a big discovered. Slipknot merch tent here. Like, oh, Got Corey car, Taylor yeah, on the screens really chatting. Out, you know? And we didn't listen to Tilly is my business. We went right to these cells for the day. They were now open. Mm -hmm. right? I can remember. We're now in line for water. Yeah, it's being grateful. The way we are grateful to be back here doing live music. Thank y'all so much for coming today. I believe a lot of you in this crowd right now. I want to say thank you for allowing us to feel safe in this nation we call ours. We're with our friends in line to get them some beer. I don't drink at shows, but there is some prices on their beers. Come up here. No. 
You, come up here, put them up here. Put them up here. You're gonna, you're gonna do this insane verse with me, man. You ain't gonna say nothing. Just be my security, okay? Here we go. I'm gonna call it right here. So, all this stuff's on my friends. Everyone get the fuck out on the ground. I know you know how to do this. All y'all get the fuck out. That's stage two. That's all fucking party to Come on, get the fuck out. All y'all about get the fuck out. I know you know how to do this shit. We ain't coming back into this motherfucking kick city. With this motherfucking kick city. It's two words. In, wait, top of your I see you scared. Come on, get down, get down, get down. Not fresh. When this shit kicks in.
You with there? It was really special. We did a whole tour with Slipknot. I think two summers ago, and then everything shut down. And we want to visit the whole world. Don't get me wrong, you know, but for some reason we keep coming back here in Iowa with Slipknot. What the fuck? You guys are great. Thank you so much for having us again. We just released an album called, called Fortitude, but for now we're gonna play a song of our very first record released in 2001.
biggest audience we've ever played here in Atlanta. gentleman turned around and asked if we'd like a spot. And I was like, please, I will take that. <laughs> awesome. Well, headliners up next with Slipknot.
see motherfuckers anywhere, god damn it. Jesus Christ. My friends, my family, it is so good to be home. Are you happy to have fucking Slipknot back in the fucking guy on it? Thank you so fucking much for being a part of today's Not Fest right here in fucking Iowa! Sold out 30,000 crazy motherfuckers in one goddamn place. We are so fucking happy to be back. We have a lot, and I do mean a lot of crazy fucking shit for each and every fucking one of you goddamn motherfuckers out there, but I need to know one fucking thing, Iowa. I need to know one thing. Are you ready to help me go down in fucking history tonight? Then do me a favor, make some noise if you have an album here called We Are Not Your Kind. after a 30,000 person gig. Corn. Corn. It is the next day. It's about 10.30 in the morning and we're on our way back to Minneapolis to fly home. Um, we didn't do a little video with our thoughts last night just because I thought, you know, sleep on it and I'll be uh, a bit more clear-headed the we next day. We were a mess. Yeah, so uh, we, we drove back into West Des Moines and there was nowhere to eat so we just got some beef jerky and some chips and a Kit Kat out of the vending machine and that was our that was our dinner after the I show. I mean we ate we ate right before we went in yeah. at like noon and I wasn't even hungry. Yeah so anyway just to talk a bit about the music um, we got there in time to see uh, Tech Nine was the first band we really got to see. There was, really good. There was, I, I really I, like Tech Nine. I 
don't know who was on the stage when we walked in, but... It was uh, Fever 333. Okay, we didn't really get to catch that much, but Tech 9 was uh, actually really, really good. Like, that's not the usual type of music I listen to, but he was just... Like, he was talented, I thought. Really good like, rapper. Really, really good. I would honestly not mind seeing him open for a band again. Uh, who was after that? Trivium? It was Trivium next on the on the stage to the yeah, stage, left. Yeah, stage two Trivium came on. I really don't know song titles or anything by Trivium. They're good. They're a good they're, band. they're a good band, but like I didn't know anything that they were playing. I was just sort of vibing in the back, just checking them out for the first time. Um, after that, Gojira went on stage one, and, and as Trivium went off and everyone kind of moved out of the way, we kind of moved forward because we wanted to be on that side Yeah, we, uh, for future bands. We specifically came because our, like I said before, our metal tour of the year show got cancelled and both Megadeth and Lamb of God were playing. We're seeing Gojira, we're seeing Slipknot again next month, so it was like top priority for us to be seeing Lamb of God and Megadeth. So stage two is where Lamb of God and Megadeth were both going to play, so after Trivium came off, the next band on stage two was going to be uh, Lamb of God, so we wanted to get up close. We moved up, got about, what, three rows back? Yeah, we got surprisingly close, yeah. and uh, Gojira came on. There was about ten minutes lost between bands, yeah. so it was Trivium, and then ten minutes after them, Gojira went on, and we basically watched them on the screen. Which, and the screens were really good. Like, they were good quality. The sound, they had the uh, PA systems on our side, filtering all the music in. I from... would say that Gojira had the best sound of the night. Yeah, absolutely. Which was true last time I saw them, too. And as I, uh, I posted a video earlier in this video, Randy came on stage and played, sang a song with Gojira, which was really awesome. We weren't expecting to see him up there, really so cool. that was cool to see. You know, not going to happen again anytime soon unless they tour together. Uh, so, yeah, it was a shame that we didn't get to be, like, in front of the stage for them, but I'm all right. It with... was impossible. It was so jam-packed. Well, you know, moving back and forth from stage to stage. It's forth. like, you know, I, I didn't want to go over to Gojira's side and then, like, fight the crowd to try to get back to Lamb of God. And so we just watched from that side. Great set. Um, they played some of their new songs, which I was very happy to see. Another World, fantastic. Yeah, this was only their second show since they put that album out. I think the first was uh, Louder Than Life, so we were number two. I didn't look at the set list, so I was like, good, good, I like that. Um, next was Lamb of God, and things got crazy for Lamb crazy. of God. Um, what was it, like maybe two songs in, and we were all well, squashed? They played, um, Track Memento play. Mori from their new album. And then it was the song after that. It got nuts. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember exactly what the second song was, but we all. When started. they started, <laughs> uh, now you've got something to die for. No, Ruin. Ruin was the second oh, yeah, song. Ruin. I love Ruin. And yeah, people went nuts yeah. for that, and then it got even crazier for Now You Got Something to Die For. Yeah, so that was awesome. Like I haven't been in a like a rough crowd like that in a while, and you know it's good. Like I don't. I don't mind when things get rough because it's like it's that kind of music, you know. As long as it's not violently rough, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, so we were all squashed, jumping, singing, screaming. Um, they played Laid to Rest, which James was like surprised about. I'm like, they always play. I wasn't. So <laughs> in retrospect, I'm not surprised that they played it. Of course they played it. But for some reason, when they played it, I didn't even have it in my head that they would play that song. So I was like super jazzed about it. Yeah. Yeah, I love everything off of uh, Ashes of the Wake. Um, I forgot to take a video of my vest, so when I said I would post a video, I'm going to put a picture in, but I made my very own Ashes of the Wake vest. Love that album. They played Now You've Got Something to Die For. I love when they open with Omerta. There was a bunch of uh, pyro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like really loud. We didn't get any of it on tape because we were just shoulder to shoulder being no, you got it thrashed when they, around. When they opened. Did I get some? Yeah, you, you filmed the opening song and it went pow. And it went pow at the end and they had lots of fire and it was just really, I love. Fire brimstone. I love when they add that kind of stuff to shows. So really enjoyed Lamb of God. Great, great set. Really glad to be there for that. And then uh, after Lamb of God, everybody was uh, running over to stage one for some reason. Suicide Boys, I did not like. Uh, as people were moving, there was a gentleman on the barrier who was like, I don't know if I can do this for Megadeth. Shame to leave the barrier, and he's like, "Should I give the barrier to somebody?" And he looked at me. He's like, "Oh, this young lady." How might about like... this nice long <laughs> young lady? How about this young lady? And I was like, "Yeah, please." So uh, I 
took his spot on the barrier and James got to be behind me and like it was crazy like I, I couldn't believe it for such a big show yeah for like, us to get on the barrier like that we weren't trying day. we weren't trying we were just no. trying to be up close for the the two bands that we really came we for. just got really lucky yeah so so that was great I haven't been on a barrier for a show since pre-pandemic obviously the only other show I've seen is Judas Priest so really happy about that I loved loved Megadeth uh, they did play a very kind of boring set list, kind of just like what they normally play. Well, they but they came on a little bit late. Yeah. And I know they had to kind of miss a song, and uh, I think they were just trying to play, like, the hit hits. Yeah, and, like, I say it was a boring set list, but at the same time, we haven't seen them in eight years, so I was plenty happy to see what they played, and we haven't ever seen anything off of Dystopia. In fact, the only person from the lineup that was on the stage that night that we've seen before was Dave Mustaine. The last time we saw him was with David Ellison, Chris Broderick, and Sean Drover. So it was really cool to finally see Kiko and Dirk, and then, uh, I don't know that I mentioned it earlier, but when, uh, everything happened with David, I was just hoping so much that James Lomenzo would be invited to play with them on tour or even join the band, because, uh, Endgame United Abominations is my favorite era of Megadeth. I absolutely love it, and I was like... I think he's a much more exciting bass player to watch. Yeah, and, uh, I never got to see them with him. I was too young in 2009 for... That was 2009 was Endgame yeah. tour. I was too young to go see him on my own or anything like that, so first time I got to see him was 2012. And I was just really, really thrilled to see him on stage. He was having a great time. Really happy for him. I hope, uh, kind of hope that, you know, he joins the band permanently. And then hopefully it's not another eight years be yeah. <laughs> before sure we're going to see tour him. again very soon. Yeah. Great lighting show. Yeah. I thought whoever they got to do the lights, this, like, everything was really colorful and looked great. The screens were nice where it wasn't too much screens. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and... You know, we got several big rattlehead yeah. appearances, and uh, Kiko got his little his little limelight song. Where it's just yeah, him he on played the Conquer or Die. Yeah, with it's the just him on the stage. But yeah, right. But the only thing about Megadeth is during to go back to Suicide Boys, they just weren't. They I didn't like them. If you like to listen to three guys yell into a mic over their laptop. Our, our side, like our side, stage two, was all Megadeth fans, obviously, because Megadeth was the last band on that stage, and people were, like, booing, booing at them, and at one point, the sound cut out on our side for Suicide Boys, and everybody was like, yeah, and just started chanting, <laughs> chanting, Megadeth. chanting Megadeth, and I'm like, oh, this might be crazy, just like Lamb of God, because, like, everybody was like, yeah, Megadeth, Megadeth, well, we talking, Megadeth. We were talking amongst ourselves, and everyone was there for Megadeth, obviously, at the front. And they were all like, yeah, Megadeth's my favorite band. I can't wait to see them. I traveled here to see them. Megadeth comes Megadeth on. Megadeth comes on, and the entire crowd around us is just like... I saw, I looked down the barricade, and there was, like, two other guys headbanging, like, six people and ten people away from me, and everybody was just dead. I'm like, you guys were all just chanting Megadeth. What happened? I mean, we we seemed like the crazy fans just going, hey, hey. Well, I was having a great time. I was headbanging and singing and all that, so I, I didn't care, but it was just like, man, you know, it, it would have been nice if everybody was a bit more into it, you know, you kind of feel feel silly up there, but, you know, you don't want them to just be playing for a dead crowd, so that that was a little, you know, crappy. I, I prefer it to be more like it was for Lamb of God than, than that, but uh, all in all, I was very happy to see Megadeth again. Yeah. And then Slipknot, uh, like we said, we did not stay for the whole show because... Uh, we're seeing them again. Yeah, shortly. we're seeing them again, and I really did not want to deal with the parking situation. I mean, there was 30,000 people there with yeah. basically no lights in the no, park. And, no. and we're just parked in a field. There's no, there's no way to even know where you parked unless you really marked yourself down. So, what we saw was really great. Uh, we were pretty far back, as you can see in the video, but... Uh, Definitely looking forward to seeing them in Tampa at the amphitheater we saw them at last time. We've got general admission tickets. It's a very small pit, so we'll be right up front. But yeah, it was really cool to actually see them play in their home state. And uh, yeah, all in all, good show. I probably will not come back to Iowa ever unless there's a lineup this good for another festival. So. Yeah. Uh, and we have not mentioned the dust. Oh, yeah, the dust. It was a very dry day, and the grounds were 
very dry, so every time there was a mosh pit, there was a, a big plume of smoke. I will, not smoke, dust. I will post a picture that uh, NotFest posted from Lamb of God set, and it's just, we're like three, third row, and there's just like this massive plume of dust right where we are. I'm like, oh. It was like that for the whole yeah. day. I'm just, like, that's why I'm blowing black boogers out of my nose. Yeah, after we the were show. just covered and bring a comb. Yeah, I accidentally <laughs> forgot my hairbrush, and between the dust and the head banging, I had a lot of trouble detangling my hair by hand this morning. So, yeah, I've, I've heard that about festivals. It's either muddy or dusty, so either way, you've got a mess. So, yeah, that was our first real festival that I've ever been to. Like, Orlando was technically a festival, but. It wasn't 30,000 people. Like that. It wasn't 30,000 people, two stages, uh, a carnival ride. Like, it it wasn't like that. So, so cool. So, yeah, great show, terrible roads, and lots of dust and corn. Yep. So, uh, I guess that's all we're going to have for you guys today. We're just going to, we're on our way to Minneapolis to fly home and uh, go sleep in our own bed. Yep. So, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Told by a YouTube video to go to a place called Casey's for breakfast and get breakfast pizza. So, yeah. so pray for us. <laughs> what do you think of Casey's breakfast pizza? Heavy, but delicious. Probably the best thing we've eaten in Iowa so far. <laughs> so far.